Welcome to it, welcome to it. This is uh, Upfront with Kaz. And uh, this is of course Real to Real and this is part two where I invite Fulma Dandara to join me and chat all about the, the, um, the movie industry, acting, uh, characters and uh, this is my series called Upfront with Kaz. This has been a lifelong dream of mine to do this type of programming where I interview people that inspire me and inspire others and motivate people and we're just talking about their industry, how they've made it uh, from where they were to, to make their dreams manifest and also how they made it through the struggle and what they learned. Today is um, Upfront with Kaz, Real to Real and Flum Dandala will be joining us. If you don't know him, well you better Google. Uh, I'm going to put him on the screen right now so don't go anywhere. Movies, TV, and characters. Let's go. Today, I wanted to talk more about your favorite characters, characters that you played, that you felt that really changed you as a person. You know, just playing the character opened your mind to something new. What well, comes to you? What we, I'll tell you what we can do. Yeah. Every single character. I, I don't. I don't believe in this thing that um, there are favorite characters. There are characters that stretch you. There are characters that, where the fit is organic, yeah. and then there are characters where the, it's really, really taking it out of you. Um, but if an actor, when I, it's a fatal mistake to judge a character. Um, any character that you play, the second you judge it, you're in trouble. Yeah. What you've got to, what you've got to do at least, is you've got to understand it subjectively subject subjectively understand the intentions of any character and if you can do that then you don't judge it all you're doing is subjectively understanding why this character had to go and kill 20 million people using a nuclear bomb yeah. you know what i mean so each character is important in its own self because it's telling a specific story and of Correct. course a lot of people don't understand that before you play the character you you get taken sort of an arc of the character, a, a line of before the character, how, what got the character to where it is presently, and yeah. how important is that to get into into character, like understanding yeah. what the person went through. Correct, correct. In fact, what you what you're wanting to do is um, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing, and uh, a movie like like uh, Inception explained it really well. Overall, you've got one big intention, right? Uh, and that big intention then informs all your, your smaller intentions. So I want to take over the world. I meet a beautiful woman who says, me or the nuclear bomb. She's very attractive, but my overall intention then informs my smaller intention and so in that moment i choose the bomb and not her does that make sense but what if she is the bomb <laughs> <laughs> then you just change the big intention <laughs> sorry i just had to sorry <laughs> now you've just changed the intention entirely <laughs> sorry i just i just already no, okay cool, cool. i want to talk about Last week, we, we talked a bit about South African actors and actors that inspired you. We also talked about actors from abroad um, yeah. that inspired you. Um, do you go into each character, look, look at a specific character that maybe done similar, similar parts to draw from? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes you're, you're drawing from him and sometimes you're learning what not to do. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Um, if you do a, um, a, a rugby coach and you don't look at Pacino in any given Sunday, you're silly. You're stupid. And not because you want to copy it, but so that you can know what else is out there at the moment. Yeah. Does that make sense? And so you look at contemporaries like that. You look at yeah. them so that you know where you fit in. You want to draw a little bit from, it's that thing that we spoke about the last time, where you say, what is out there? What can my contribution be so that I stand out? 
Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. You must look at um, other characters. Although that's that's me. There are there are actors out there who absolutely will not do that. They want to go in fresh. They want to go in, and they simply don't look at all at what every everyone else has done. And, you know, it's a it's a yeah. personal choice. Now tell me, um, once you've done a project, I know people like Johnny Depp, for example, he doesn't like to watch himself. Like I know that I get uncomfortable watching myself. People, people sometimes people may think that we love ourselves, but some of us don't like to watch ourselves because it's the actual playing of the part and being in that moment that is the most rewarding. Oh, I mean, but some people it's easier for them. How are you about watching your own work or not? I never watch my work. Is that? Ever, ever. Um, the last time I saw anything I was in was the first two weeks. Is it dingo? Do not, do not watch myself at all. Um, yeah. And again, it's that thing of um, I can only crit myself when I can do something about it. So while I'm doing the work, I'm going to run to the monitor and look and see how it's reading. I'll talk a lot with the, with the director and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'll surround myself with, with people who I think are of value to, uh, to the work that I'm doing. Because, you know, uh, especially on, on screen, performance is a collaborative experience. But once we have it, then I let it go. Then I let it go. It needs to find its That's own life. I, yeah. I simply don't look back. Yeah, it's important to let it go. Otherwise, you get stuck in the past. Maybe sometimes over judgmental of of where you were and everything else. Correct. And and also it creates an insecurity. So if yeah. I end up finding something amazing in a character, and then I go and watch myself, now I'm sitting there going, "Ooh, actually, that that makes me look stupid," which is important for the character. But it's bad for me because now I'm trying to be a hero and I'm looking at it while I'm sitting with some, some people that I admire. And so my intentions, my desire is not the same. Now I want to look cool. I don't want to be authentic. And so, you know, it's better that I judge as I was when I was being authentic. Let's look at our own, um, our own industry uh, in, in SA and in Africa, for example. Do you think yeah. that what we're going through, uh, as far as even the, the COVID situation, do you think beyond this, there's some good opportunity for our industry to grow? And and uh, and if so, if so, what do you think we need to be focusing on to, to get the right perception of our industry? Oh gosh, there's a lot. Okay, the car stopped. This is for all the people what out there. Think? The car is stopped. I am now alone in the car, and so I'm going to take the mask off. Okay. These things are important. <laughs> These things are important. It's also important to always, um, while we're at it, I don't know who I'm going to be advertising. In fact, I'm not going to advertise. But always have a, a hand sanitizer in the car. That's what I like to do. It's just one of the many ways that I try and keep myself um, COVID-free. You shouldn't touch your face, but I've just cleaned my hands, so I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, sorry, two, ask your question again. So we said, so post-COVID, I mean, the world is changing as we know it. We yeah. still are entertainers and actors, and we do different things to survive. Um, yeah. How do we grow our industry to its, you know, to its max, where we start getting proper work? And more importantly, what are the things that we do to create the right perception? Because up to this point, all we've been doing is no matter how great actors we are, we get the B grade parts, one liners in B grade movies. Only a few of us, like the John Carney here, and they get that proper part. You're, you're opening up Pandora's box now. Are you ready? Yeah, bro. So, what do we do? Is it the writers? What do we do? Ownership. No, it's not the writers. It's two issues ownership and platform. So, how it works in South Africa at the moment is that if you go and pitch. Actually, it's even, yeah. We have a tender system. We like to believe it's a TV, it's a, it's a TV industry. It's not. It's a tender industry. Meaning, if I go and pitch an idea to um, 
any one of the channels, SABC, MT, uh, DSTV, ETV, they all work the same. I go and pitch an idea called, what's that thing behind you? That, that, um, the yeah, red thing, yeah, that. So this what's I got from Colin May, it's a body, okay. boxing bodyguard, because okay. life is like a fight. Right. So I'm going to pitch an idea <laughs> called uh, body boxing fight. You with me? Yeah. The second I pitch it to a channel, they can do it without me. The fact that they do it with me is an act of generosity on yeah. their part. Do you understand? Once we sign that, okay, we're commissioning this. In fact, before you, commit, you even do that, you are required to sign a document that says, please understand that there are many ideas out there and your idea could be pitched by several other people who are not you. And therefore, okay. we might take that one mm -hmm. and not yours. Do you see how it protects them? Essentially, yep. they can take your idea and not pay yep. you a cent. And yep. be protected. And there's very little you can do. Um, but what's worse is if you do pitch it and you do get accepted, that, what did we call it? Boxing gym, da 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 da. That show belongs to the channel, not you. Because they paid for it. Oh. Because they paid for it. Now, we are one of very few countries in the world that do that. Everywhere else, there's something called intellectual property rights. Meaning, mm. I came up with Baywatch, it belongs to me. You I am leasing it out to you. So yes. what you're paying for is not to own it. You are paying for broadcasting rights. Yeah. Correct. Because once you broadcast it, the rights revert back to me. The deal we have is you can show it two times. You can show it three times. Thereafter, it is mine, and all bets are off. I can sell it to anyone else I please. This is why Oprah is a millionaire. Billionaire. This is why... David Hasselhoff became a multimillionaire of one show. This is why America and Britain and anywhere else make money, because the artists, the creators, own the content. In South Africa, we do not own the content. Moreover, we, we come up with the idea, we pitch it to channel, channel sees it, likes it, takes it, they own it, which means if you come up with <laughs> which means when they then sell it onwards, you don't get a blue penny. This is crazy, man. Now on Correct. that just like right on what you're saying is that's one of the reasons why I stepped out of the industry for a long time. Because this is what happened. People see us on TV, they have a a perception that we are millionaires because we're there, even a part that we own certain products and they expect you to live a certain lifestyle, which puts a lot of stress. People don't understand the depression that a lot of performers go through because they can't live up to the standards. So we yes, go away. They have a right to think that. hundred percent. So, so, but only few of us are blessed enough to have the right minds speak to us and the right minds to say, okay, have ownership. No matter yeah. what you do, you've got to pay for that production. Uh, uh, own, for example, I had to form my own record label, so I'm releasing my own product that I produced on my own computer. I'm releasing mm -hmm. my own hip-hop documentary, Strength on a Struggle. Everything we're doing, there's ownership because I've ownership, registered. Ownership, 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 yes. But we weren't told this when we started. That's why this is why you and I are discussing because we need to emancipate the ones that come after us. Correct. But good day. So let me just give people a background as to what we were talking about. First of all, if you're just yes. joining the show, this is Upfront with Cares. Every day I talk to great minds about things that they are specialists in. Today we're talking to Shlomo Dandala, well-known actor. But we're talking about more than just the fame game. We're talking about what it takes to make it through the struggle. Uh, and earlier on, we were on the line, we were talking about specifically how we change the industry, how we get to a place of ownership uh, and so, because a lot of people don't understand, they'll see us on the screen and we think, um, but you guys should be millionaires, you should be making it by now. They don't understand the, com the complications, the things that we deal with. So we want to talk about that and hopefully 
empower others to have ownership. So how does it actually work here as, as co compared to America um, with ownership and licensing your own product? Right. Okay, well, let, let's start with the simple stuff. Uh, the yeah. difference between us and most other countries, so America, Canada, Australia, America, um, um, UK, uh, even the Far East. When you make the content, you own the content. In South Africa, when you make the content, it belongs to the channel. Yeah? And, and that's, that, that makes all the difference. Because what that essentially means is that as my content continues to generate income, I get none of that. I don't get any of the upside. I'm only on the downside. So I get a salary, and once I've had the salary, that's it. Whereas everyone else in the world, you get a salary, but then you get royalties. You get, uh, as, as the show is being sold, as it's being watched, as it's being picked up, everyone gets a kickback into that. Now, there are many reasons for that. Mostly they're historical, um, but yes. So in South Africa, we don't. So a simple show, like um, the, the example I was giving you, um, something like Baywatch. Yeah. Baywatch has made the actors of Baywatch, has made the, 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 the creatives of Baywatch a lot of money. Why? Because it got syndicated, meaning it was picked up by many other channels. SABC picked it up. I think ETV picked it up at one point, And the same for many other countries all over the world. And every time a new um, channel, a new uh, platform picks them up, the creatives get paid. In this country, that doesn't happen. So I've had shows that are showing in America, in Jamaica, in Canada, in all of Europe, in all of Africa, and I haven't earned a cent from that beyond the salary that I, I made. If I was, um, or if in South Africa we had a system where I do get that kickback, then I would be living the kind of life that I should be, the, the kind of life that um, our audience members expect us to live. That's really the big, big difference in television. Do we have, first of all, do we have the power to change it? If not, so how do we? How do we get into a point? Because I think what we're trying to clarify with the audience is because you're probably wondering where have I been, where's Loma been? Why were we <laughs> taken off air at the times when we were picking? Well, because number one, they said we were overexposed. Just as we should have. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Students that should have kick-started our careers. We had to go on pause because they told us we were too overexposed. And so Correct. that's when your earning potential stopped. Whereas in other Correct. places, people get licensing fees and stuff like that. So we're talking about, so what do we do to create our own content, to have ownership, to start you know, living a better life? Well, it, it, it's, it takes some courage. It's going to take a lot of courage in the sense that um, in South, when we make content here, we cannot be making content in a tender relationship as we've done before. So currently you only make a show because SABC, someone at SABC goes, I like the show, I'm gonna give you the money, here's the money, go. Yeah. Or someone at DSTV or someone at ETV. That's how the shows have happened at the moment. And so what's happening is platforms like, like your DSTV, SABC, ETV are trying to amass content because it makes them competitive. It can't happen like that anymore. But, and here's the good, the, uh, the good news. The good news is there are new ways of making content and making it profitable. Um, right now, we're, we're, we're having a conversation on Instagram. That's content. And that content is worth something. If you, do, if you finance your own um, short film, long film, series even, if you, you can do that and put it on YouTube. And you, there are ways now of, of um, leveraging that to generate money, uh, uh, to generate interest. Because what's happening is people are no longer all gathering around the television. We're a little behind in terms of that. But more and more globally, the TV is no longer being hogged. If, if, um, if someone is hogging the TV, you just uh, sit next to the TV and you are on YouTube and oh. you're watching your 
you're on Netflix watching your own content and so on and so forth. So there are new ways of, of uh, getting our content to the viewer. What we haven't started doing, and that's really a question of evolution, is as content creators, we haven't evolved new systems to, to generate revenue out of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was watching, um, I was listening to Gary V, who's his top businessman motivational guy um, in the States. He's, he's mm -hmm. of Russian descent, and he's talking about also the same thing. Like, first of all, you've got to be brave enough to get that content out and not thinking about monetizing immediately. You've got to think about, Correct. first of all, being authentic, because number one, when you are authentic, it allows you to make content that is consistent. And like you said, by maybe loading it up to, onto your Instagram or to YouTube, mm -hmm. you start building up content. Like what I'm doing now is doing something positive now, owning the, the platform and using my social capital, so to speak. The fact that I know you from 20 years yeah. ago, I had a good relationship with you. See, this is the capital that exists now that didn't exist before. Before it was the fact that we had BMWs and nice hairstyles and nice clothes. Now it's who you know and on what level are you connecting with to create some Correct. content. And Correct. So now Correct. we're trying to create content that we can apply and put onto YouTube, ABC, and s sort of sooner rather than later, people that want to advertise will want to hold hands with us and walk together. But we can't hold back. Like for years, I was going from channel to channel, got this idea, got this idea. And a few months later, I see my idea and I'm like, but that's my idea. Because yep. I signed saying that they may see something that's from somebody else that may be similar over and over until I realized all of a second, rather hold back, create my content, even if it's going to cost me. Own it. You know? Correct. Hey, do you remember, did you watch the, the, the thing with um, Erica Badu and Jill Scott? What's that? About a, two days ago, they had a Jill Scott versus uh, Erica Badu. Um, with this, they were, they were, they were singing of each other's voices and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And playing yes, each other's yes. music and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, advertisers haven't caught on to how content is, is, is reaching the people now. Yeah. If I was a Jameson, if I was a Coca-Cola, if I was a Cadbury, if I was anything, I would have had those two stars interacting with my product while yeah. they were having that. Because do you understand how many eyeballs that, that pulled globally? Yeah. That's the value now of, of content. It's about... It's about how you can monetize it. So, so people don't understand. This is how television works. This is how television makes money, okay? Yeah. They have a um, eight o'clock to half past eight time slot on mon from Monday to Friday, 8 p.m. to 8.30. And they have to make that 8.30 to that, eight, that 30 minutes, they have to make it make money. You follow? So what do they do? They go to um, Fundi Wundler and they say, Fundi Wundler, please take this money and create a show called Generations. We are going to pay you what equates to um, 200,000 rand per 30 minutes. Okay? And it seems like a lot now because 200,000 rand times uh, all those 30 minutes for a whole year. Now, that's yep. big money. Mfundi oh, then yeah. takes that. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but Mfundi takes that money. He yes. then pays the actors. He pays the studio. He pays camera people. He pays an editor. He pays wardrobe. He pays and pays and pays and pays and pays so yeah. that he can create content to give to um, a, a TV station who paid yeah. 200,000 rand for that time slot, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we all know how they work, but we're not going to talk about that. We're talking just in principle how it works. Yes. So now, SABC has put in 200,000 rand for a TV show, and they're hoping that it's going to generate eyeballs. People are going to want to come and watch this show. And while they're watching this show, they're going to go to Royco and say, hey, we're going to sell you this time slot, this 30... Um, 
inside this 30 minutes, we're going to do little spaces where you can advertise. And you yeah. are going to pay us 80,000 rand per for slot. A per slot. Now they've yeah. sold, in that 30 minutes, they've sold 10 slots at 80,000 rand, yeah. at 80,000 rand a piece. Now they've made, uh, what is that, 800,000 rand. Yeah, so they've paid for the series and made stream. You understand it. So and they, they own the market. 800,000 rand. And out of that 800,000 rand, they paid 200,000 rand to Fundi to make generations. And okay. then he takes what, is it, what he wants and pays that and, and so on and so forth. Now, that's in principle how television works. Yep. The problem in South Africa is... The 200,000 rand that they paid was for that slot only. Mm -hmm. And maybe one other slot at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning or uh, tomorrow during the afternoon, right? Yeah. Now, instead of giving you the show back or giving the show back to Mpundi so that he can then take it and sell it somewhere else. Yeah. They say, no, 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 we paid the 200,000 Rand, and yeah. so the show is ours entirely. You, you hear it. And then they take it to Swazi TV, to Bob TV, to Namibia TV, to uh, Jamaica TV, and they sell it there. And now they're making extra money out of that 200,000 Rand, which technically is not fair because you, you understand it. That's currently been the challenge. Now, all mm -hmm. South African TV stations work like this. Yeah. So they'll pay you the 200,000 Rand and whatever they make after that, they put in their pocket because they made the initial investment. Times have changed. Instagram allows us to generate this kind of content. YouTube allows us to do entire shows. Yeah. And what we as content creators are needing to do now is to then go to the advertiser and go, well, um, if I sell to, if I sell to you, Mr. Royco and Coca-Cola and such, not only will I, um, will I have the logo, you will see me drinking um, yeah. this Coca-Cola. Kaz, you will be eating your Royco, which means whatever. all the people who are watching cannot now go ah, fast forward because uh, I don't want to see the advert. I just want to see the content that I wanted to see. I want to see generations, see not the ad. Yeah. You follow. And so these are the new opportunities. And so if you're getting in this game now, what you should be designing is the kind of content that has a product in mind. And especially if you've got pull. If you've got pull, you should have a, the kind of content that has a product in mind so that you can go to a Unilever or a Tiger Brands and say, hey, listen, I'm going to talk about my beauty products, okay? Yeah. And this is the kind of viewership I'm going to generate on this platform. And I'm going to generate this, pl uh, this, pl uh, this kind of viewership on this other platform using the same thing. Give me this so I can interact with it. Now pay me for that content. And, and so now, what you're going mm -hmm. yeah. and Now it's going to bring me to the point where you're going to see the sense in what we're doing right here. Why don't you take a quick bite there? So what we do okay, now is we, Yeah, so we're telling people this is what you've got to do. Now you're going to see what's happening here. This is social capital. We haven't seen each other for years, but the energy we left off with was positive. So when we reunite, mm -hmm. he knows where I'm coming from. I know where he's coming from. But this yeah. is what I say to Thlomna. I say to Thlomna, I'm doing a show called Upfront with Cares. Yeah. However, Upfront with Cares is going to be like its own channel in which each day is going to have a different slot. But I'm willing to have rather 60% of something than 100% of the whole of nothing. So I'm saying to Thlomna, for example, mm -hmm. so this show we do on Monday is called Real to Real. Mm -hmm. I partner with you. We both create content. We empower others, but we both make money going forward. Tuesday, I do a show with our did with music, with Colin Col Nathan, with boxing. So now we're thinking about the bigger picture because remember, it is a marathon, not a sprint. So that's while exactly.
Are we telling people to create content? Let's be aware that we don't make the mistakes that we made before. You know, it's correct. Got correct. In fact, I would so, even go you one better. Yeah. I would say, and this is something, and I'm, I, I pull these things out now because I think there's an opportunity. Yes. The 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 old way of doing things where it's mine, 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 only mine. You must bugger off because this is all that doesn't work anymore. Okay. Nope. The more we we knit together, the more we have conversations together, the more we we um, there's a word for it. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Yeah, the yeah. The we real... operate with each other. The more we can, the more strength we can generate. So now imagine a channel on YouTube or here that runs 24 hours a day because yeah. Kaz knows that he's responsible for the Monday 12 to 1 o'clock slot. Colin is doing his own slot between uh, 2 and 3. I'm doing no. 1 three to 4, 4 to 5, and so on and so forth. Do you know what that is? That is a channel. Hello. Hello. You're done. So that's it. So basically what's happening is people are, are witnessing the unfolding of this and the whole thing is correct. We and, do and not Ruth? sorry to disrupt you. Everyone has Oh, I was going to say and, and it's really about, about association now. It's a it's a situation where you say, if I am Kaz, who is in alignment with what I'm trying to do? And so you unite with those people and you do your own market research. What's popular? What's not popular? And then we say, okay, we're going to create this kind of content. Uh, we want a little bit of music. We want a little bit of um, uh, fighter ethic and all of those kind of things. We want uh, educational stuff. And you can do an entire thing, an entire channel. Hell, you could do that for this. You could do it for, uh, for school. Imagine a, a live channel on Instagram where... At eight o'clock, we start. We're teaching maths for grade, for grade five. Okay, yeah. we're teaching grade five maths from eight o'clock to nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, we're still doing grade five, but now we're doing English. Yeah. From uh, ten o'clock, we're doing uh, Afrikaans for grade five. At eleven o'clock, we're doing. Give me another. Um, yeah. I, so, do you follow? So this is it. Like what we do on Zoom, but now we're saying we're using social media, which we have got an existing precisely, audience precisely to make this so happen. What what you're talking about is imagine a bunch of teachers who uh, you'd need eight, five, five or six teachers who say this channel is going to run live every day for grade yeah. five. If you are in grade five and you're not going to school tune in here and we're going to run lessons and you can pop questions and all sorts of things. Tomorrow, we're, we're doing exactly the same thing. We're picking up where we left off. On another channel, there's one for grade six, on another one for grade seven, on another one for grade eight, nine. Do you follow? And that's worth something. That has a value. That has absolute value because in between all of this, you're interacting with products. You're interacting. This is sponsored by Unilever. This is sponsored by Cell C. This is sponsored by all of those people. But we're sitting on, in a situation now where we are able to generate this kind of content. And now it just needs creative minds. I've just given right. for free a so bunch this, of ideas. Yeah, so this is where we are right now because what we're trying to do is actually talk to the, the audience out there because we're all going through trouble sometimes. And a lot of people want security. But there is no security right now. We don't know what is going to happen if it's unfolding. Mm -hmm. So we've got to each person start thinking about what do I contribute to the global society? What is not my mind? What is my purpose? What is my vision? And then my goals will be how I break it down. So, so for, for many years, I was um, having a pity party. Like I had so many ideas taken from me. This, this, one day I just stopped and I said, hold on a second. Any day could be my last day. Today Correct. is the day when I reach out and I, and I give it without asking because once you start doing it, people, number one, can see authenticity. You know, I can pay for this. Neither am I. It's our data. But mm -hmm. we know we are building something because if there's passion and purpose behind it, that will create the consistency. So what's the space? There you go. You've understood me. It, but You've that's understood. exactly it. You understood me. <laughs> so, so, 
Mm. So now we've got clear footage and stuff. So, so let's just clarify. This is yeah. where we are going to, and people, whoever's watching us right now is bearing witness to what we are building. We are building our own challenge, cha um, yeah. channels, our own content, our own networks. We also are advising people out there to do their same, to believe in themselves, to create content, but to follow their passion. So if you're supporting us, watch this space, support us. Please follow, please like. Go to our YouTube pages, Kaz Abrams, Wana Production, Pluma Dandala. I'm going to take this footage, and the footage from earlier, then I, go to, I sit until 12 at night, and I edit it. Yes. I edit it. Then I'm going to throw it on the YouTube, and then I'm going to release mm -hmm. it back on social media. Like you'll see on my story, there's a five-minute slot. So I'm going to keep on doing this, because what else is there to do but what we love doing? Correct. So, Correct. Um, where, right. where to from here? Where to from here? Because um, exciting things are ahead of us. There's and exciting things. Um, there's a beautiful saying that says, uh, and, and politicians like the saying, they say, never waste a good disaster. Yeah. Never waste a good disaster. COVID-19 has been a, an epidemic of note. It has been a huge disaster. But at every disaster, there's an opportunity. Yeah. And now for the first time, it's the same thing that happened with generations, generations, when generations had that big, big disaster where the, the actors were walking off. I think it was the 14 or 18 actors who said, no more, we're not doing this. And then they walked off. For the first time, South African audiences were able to say, hey, what else is on at eight o'clock? And suddenly you saw all these other shows starting to come up. And it's been an, um, an enormously productive uh, disaster for the industry. So I, I want to just step in here and just answer see Buma Bena. This is my biggest gripe with uh, SA Talent is the general need for someone else to find the idea, fund the ideas. When will you guys pull together and crowdfund your ideas? Well, this is it. This is what we're doing right now. This is self-funded. Um, my, my album that's been 20 years in the making is launched on May the 15th called Chocolate Hut. It'll be a brand that will be showcasing different talent. It's the brand that launched RJ Benjamin. Uh, the hip hop documentary Strength on a Struggle, which I filmed from 2006 with my own camera, mm -hmm. Pro Key, Double HP. It's all mm -hmm. coming self-funded and we are not moaning. We actually celebrating the fact that we have realized that by funding our own stuff and by funding, it doesn't mean that you need million dollars it could mean you got your cell phone no. if your phone is what you got make it work for use that you. because rather show someone action than talk to them tell them a story now you can say to, i can say to people look at what i'm doing what do you think but i want to keep Listen, on doing it no matter what this content is already out there no so i know i was saying to you earlier when we were chatting about these guys in durban who are doing yeah. amazing amazing comedy i'm a big big fan <laughs> The guys in Durban who are doing these these comedy skits. There's uh, what's his name in in uh, I think he's in PE who does these comedy skits. There's all of those except each one is doing it in an island by themselves. They're trying to build themselves by alone. It is not brain surgery to go, chaps. Why don't we all get together? Do what you're doing, and I'll do what I'm doing. But instead of launching it for free on on. Um, on Twitter and all of these places, why don't we just all put it into one channel so that we're able to funnel all our, all, all our audience members into one thing and we create a, a brand and things like uh, Comedy Central, that's how they were born. Yeah. But you see, yes, this is a coming together of certain talents. So I'm yeah. saying, imagine, <laughs> this is insane. We are constantly alive here, bro. I'm realizing it as I'm talking. So we're yeah. talking about crazy. There should be the Department of Education should have Instagram classes running literally 12 hours a day. Exactly. And all it requires is 12 teachers to give one hour each. Do you understand? Per grade. So from grade one, there's an there's a, a six hour to ten hour lesson that's just going. And they're putting links and all sorts of things. For grade two, same thing. Grade three, four, five, all the way to grade 12. That should be happening on, on platforms like Instagram. 
instead of each school trying to do a Zoom and battling. and No, have a channel and have one, one teacher, one nurse. And this, you is essentially where, this is essentially where my concept came from. Uh, called, my company is called One Up Productions. And basically, it's based on that biblical scripture where two or more are gathered in my name, there shall I be. One, just think about it. Guys, think about it. I don't want to get too deep. If we come from the same source and we are all part of the same source, doesn't it not make sense for us to work together or find a way to work together? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Right now, especially now when there's some people that are going to be suffering at different levels, people are going to be losing jobs. We mm -hmm. don't need to be focusing on only on the negative, but pushing as much positivity out there as possible. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And really, it's a question of, listen, if you want it hard enough, it'll happen. Build it, they will come. It costs you nothing but time. Just build it. Build it. Or once you've built it, just be smart about it. Like I'm saying with the comedians, put all that stuff together in one channel so that we are, you are able to, am to amass all those eyeballs into one space, create an identity around it, and boom, you've got yourself all sorts of avenues. So I'm saying this disaster, this COVID disaster is a great opportunity for creative minds. Yeah. And we just need and to be... I think in closing, the nice thing about this is, and I think the reason why we connect on this is that we were very lucky as the original members of Channel O that we were brought together and the channel that didn't have a lot of budget. They said to us, look, Emmett has given us a chance. Mm -hmm. They just say, let's see how it works. But they picked the most passionate individuals and gave us training and said, look, we're going to do so many slots, but we're going to do like four. We're going to do the whole week. We're going to film uh -huh. it in one day. We need you guys to be fast. We need you to be energetic. We need you to add Done. your own stuff. So we would all be in the change room with, with <laughs> Wongs and everyone, our makeup artists. We'd all, be yeah. this, we'd all be like six, seven of us, 12 of us in the change room, talking to each other, vibing, energy. So we'd all be feeding each other. And, and basically, this is what we're doing is we're resurrecting. That's how magic come has happened. Together, and it's just about sharing. And uh, we're going to catch up with you again next week, Monday. I, I think this could just, uh, it's going to be amazing. What, what final words do you have to say to the people watching you? that have watched your whole journey and words I, I always say to people, and it's, it's something that, it's easy to say it, it's another thing to live it. <laughs> and especially young people in, in South Africa need to hear this. No one is coming to save you. No one. Not government, not America, nobody is coming to save you. If you don't build it, it simply will not be built. It's that simple. You want it, build it. But now to add on to that, because some people may think, but how? Realize this, there is divine within each and every one of you. The thought has power. Watch what you think, for it will manifest. Watch what you Correct. think, watch what you say. Watch who you surround yourself with. Correct. If they could put you down, rather be alone. The company you keep will be what you reap. And in Correct. closing, that's all I got to say. From now next week, as you can see, guys, well, our schedules are hectic. We're just trying to capture the magic as we go. Because once I got it, I got it. We're going to make magic happen until 12. Go. Catch this live on YouTube at Kaz Abrams, one of the elections. Follow Becky Caswell, follow Tom and Nadala. Support local talent. We love you. Keep believing in yourself. Peace. First.